Hello, I'm going to be looking at my third round game from the Ohio Chess Congress. In this game, I had the black pieces against Rocky Wang. Um, my opponent's rating was listed as 1800, but I was playing a nine-year-old, and he was very obviously underrated. He actually ended up winning 50 rating points in this tournament, so he had a very strong tournament. Started with one and a half out of two in the open section, so... Definitely um, a scary 1800 for sure. Um, but the game started with e4, and then I played c5. This is the Sicilian defense, and this is one of the first times I played this opening in a long time. And the reason I played it is because I worked on a Sicilian course this summer um, with Matt Jensen, and it's called the Dubov Dragon. If you haven't heard of it or seen it, you should definitely check it out. Um, there's a lot of really cool lines, and we designed the course to play for a win. So um, instead, my, my opponent, instead of a normal Sicilian, which would be to like play d4 here, they played bishop to b5. Now this is called the, the Rosalimo, and this is more of a solid uh, way that white can play the Sicilian. It's less, um, less dangerous, it's just more playing for a slight advantage, nothing crazy. And it was actually popularized in the Carlson versus Caruana World Championship match. Um, so anyway, after bishop b5, um, in the course we looked at a lot of different options, but we thought e6 was the best way to play for a win, so that's what I played. Then my opponent took on c6, I took back. And any time um, pieces get straight off the board, it really changes the dynamic of a position. So it's important to kind of take account of, you know, how the position has changed whenever a capture occurs. So when this capture occurred, um, basically what happened, my opponent gave up their light squared bishop, I lost a knight. So I have the two bishops versus my own opponent only has one bishop now. And the other thing is, um, this position, after I play like d5 here, I don't, the computer says it's inaccurate, it's fine. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a totally normal move. Um, but anyway, um, I think it's also possible instead of d5, um, I think what it wanted is knight e7 to g6, or like queen c7 and e5, um, but it's close enough. Um, I played d5, and after d5, I felt like the pawn structure was very similar to a French defense. Uh, French is when you play e6 followed by d5. And a lot of times you play c5, you know, sometimes they take on c6. Um, it felt very much like a French, except um, my opponent's pawns are less advanced, meaning I have more space. Usually they're all um, advanced like that. And the other thing is that my opponent doesn't have their light squared bishop. Usually the bishop on e2 or d3, but in this line, he took my knight on c6, and now he no longer has a light squared bishop. And in the French, the light squared bishop is by far white's best piece. So already, um, I was pretty happy with this position. Eval isn't as happy as I was, but um, I could have used my knowledge of different openings to relate the positions to different openings, and so I felt more familiar with the positions uh, I reached. So here my opponent played queen e2. Not really sure what that was doing, um, but I just played knight to e7 because I want to develop my pieces, and I didn't want to go to f6, for example, because I didn't love it getting kicked out with e5 um, whenever white wanted, really. So I thought it would be better for it to be on the g6 square where if white ever pushes e5, now it's already attacking that pawn and putting pressure on that square. So knight e7, white castles, I play knight to g6. Continuing my development, my opponent plays rook to d1. This is a pretty interesting move. I wasn't really sure, again, what his idea was, but it becomes a little bit clear um, in the coming moves. So here I play bishop e7, kind of the same thing with my, my knight. Um, I didn't really want to go to f6, and here I didn't really want to go to d6 because of e5. But the computer actually justifies this and says, 
bishop d6 is fine because after e5, bishop c7, this pawn is actually somewhat of a target. Something that I can put more and more pressure against. You can play f6 at the right time. And um, again, it's more of a target than a strike for white. So this is something I maybe I should have considered, but bishop e7, which is what I played, is also perfectly fine. And now my opponent played c4. And I drew a lot of errors here. Um, but what c4 is doing, first off, this kind of somewhat explains the rook coming to the d file. Taking on c4 is never an option. Not that it's very appealing anyway, because um, I have these double isolated pawns, but it's even less appealing now. Um, so somewhat explains rook d1, but still not exactly. Um, the other thing about c4 is it's cementing my pawns on my doubled c pawns on these squares, especially this c5 pawn becomes very weak. This is very similar to a Nimzo Indian, except I would be like the white pieces, um, where black would like take on c3 and I would take back with a b pawn and then they play c5. And what they do is they bring their knight out to a5, play b3, or I guess b6, bishop a6, and they really go after, they cement um, the, the c pawn the c4 pawn or c5 pawn, depending on what side, and they just go after it. They bring their knight and their bishop to these squares, and they attack it. So this is kind of what I felt like my opponent was trying to do. And after this move, I just castled. Um, I wanted to get my king out of the center. I'm not really scared of any captures because I'm very well reinforced in the center. So my opponent plays knight to c3. Now this kind of justified what I thought, you know, that they were going to go for this plan, uh, bringing the knight to a4. And here I took a pretty big thing. I felt like this was uh, kind of a critical moment, because if I don't do anything, um, it's not clear how I develop. Like, this light squared bishop isn't super happy, and, like, maybe I can bring my rook to b8, but again, how do I, how do I keep improving my pieces? It's not super clear. And the other thing was, I felt like d4 was the right move, but it's a very committal move. Um, I didn't love how committal it was, but I did end up playing this move um, because it's it's very important to gain the space. And after the knight moves to a4, for example, I can play e5 and I gain even more space. And now I'm ready to develop this bishop potentially to g4. I'm ready to play f5 in the right moment. And um, I'm pretty happy with this position because I have a big space advantage. So the eval is already um, very much so in Black's favor, even though we're only 12 moves in, because of Black's big space advantage. So after e5, um, this was played in the game, my opponent played b3. Again, now it's pretty clear what my opponent's plan is. They want to go bishop to a3, target this pawn. And now I played bishop to d6. So I just took a timeout um, to deal with my opponent's idea of pressuring this pawn. So if he plays bishop to a3 now, I was very well equipped to just play queen to e7, potentially um, uh, protecting that pawn. That's kind of why I played bishop to d6, but I was also very much so hoping to see this move because I had a little trick. I really wanted to see this move because bishop to g4 would have been very strong. Because this pin is impossible to get out of. If you ever move out of the pin, I take, and then my knight lands on f4, my queen's coming to g5, I have huge attacking chances, and my knight on f4 is just incredibly strong. So um, this is already an incredibly dangerous position. Um, if, you know, white took here, I play knight f4, I can take, and it's already... Um, leading to mates or, you know, something like that uh, with the queen coming to g2 next. So this was something that I was kind of hoping for, but unfortunately my opponent didn't play that. Sorry, instead of bishop d6, I, I should also mention um, f5 is actually stronger. Um, just kind of not worrying about my opponent's ideas because, again, this bishop has to stay tied to this f4 square. If my knight can get to f4, it's just, it's too strong. I just can't let that happen. So for example, if bishop to a3, knight to f4 happens, 
the queen moves. Um, I can take, take, and I analyzed up, up until here in the game, um, but I didn't really see anything crazy. But the computer came up with this crazy move, bishop to h3, uh, which is just, it's just wild. Uh, you just sacrifice the bishop, and if he takes, take back, and after king g2, you just play a very quiet move. Queen to c8. There's no rush. You just want to bring the queen to g4, win the knights. Um, it's just, it's crazy how how quickly um, this falls apart for white and how strong black's coordination is. This rook on the f file is a very key contributor into the attack. Um, but yeah, I should have played with more um, initiative, more urgency. Um, instead, I just played bishop to d6, and my opponent played knight to e1. Again, I was kind of hoping for bishop a3, but it didn't really happen. After knight to e1, I kind of seized this opportunity to gain even more space. I played f5, and if my opponent were to take on f5, I would be extremely happy because my bishop gets to activate. Now I have this open f file. My pieces are a lot happier in general. So my opponent plays f3 instead. He wants to keep everything closed. And um, in this position, I felt like if I don't do anything right away, white's going to be okay. Like if I took on e4, um, he's just going to take back. Um, and I just don't really have anything. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to play f4. Now this was a dangerous move, and this gave away a little bit of my advantage, but um, I felt like it was the only way to prove my advantage. The computer didn't like it. Um, it preferred playing, you know, quietly, playing more patiently, which again is a, a theme with my games. Um, it prefers like rook to f7 or queen to f6, just something that's slow. Um, but yeah, I played f4, um, so I need to be a little bit more patient. And my opponent played bishop to d2, so didn't really punish. Um, bishop a3 would have been a little bit more accurate. I just play queen e7, the game continues either way. So bishop d2, I play h5. The reason I played h5 is because I wanted to play knight to h4, um, followed by like g5, h5, g4. But I was scared of a knight to h4 followed by g3. And um, if I saw this, I don't really want to take on g3. And if I retreat uh, the knight back to g6, g4, um, felt like it kind of locked everything up. But what I missed was how strong h5 is here. h5 is, is a very, very strong move. It just opens up um, white's position and just really gives me a lot of good winning chances because white's king is going to be in serious danger. Really, all I'm going to do is I'm going to play king f7, rook h8, and use this open h file. Um, if he ever takes, I can also just play queen g5 check, and then win that pawn. Um, maybe I launch the, the g pawn up the board, bring the knight to h4. Um, I'm just, just much, much better here. And black's king, or sorry, white's king is in serious trouble. Um, so this is probably better, but I, I kind of missed this idea of playing h5 and how I underestimated how strong it was. So I played h5 first. My opponent played knight c2, so it looks like he's trying to play for uh, b4 at the right moment. Um, and now I play knight to h4. My opponent plays bishop to e1, and the reason I play knight h4 now is because I was happy to play g5, and I felt like after g5, um, I like the, the, the way I, I played this whole attack, it wasn't really supported by the computer. Um, but I think forcing white to give up their, their good bishop, right? They, they put all their pawns on light squares, so this is their good bishop since their pawns aren't blocking it. Um, so I think forcing them to give up his good bishop and having this open g file towards his king. Practically, I think it gives me good chances, but again, it would have been better to be more patient and just play it a move like knight to g6 or bishop e7, something very slow, and I just wasn't really, you know, in the mood for playing slow, so I played g5, my opponent took, 
and I took back, and then my opponent played h3. So this is kind of um, a very, very close position. White is just trying to keep everything closed, and it's just claiming that it's so close, the position's just going to be a draw, because neither side can make progress. So from here on out, all I do is I try to improve my pieces. So I'm going to kind of flip through the next few moves, because all I do is I improve my pieces. I try to use that open G file, try to attack the king, and yeah, so I bring my king away from the G file, bring my rook, bring my rook to G3. Now I have ideas of sacrificing on H3. So my opponent actually went to H2 after going to H1 um, last move. I play queen G5, apparently a little inaccurate. Um, it probably would have been better to uh, potentially um, Actually, I'm not sure. Queen g5 is, is actually coming up with the engine right now. Um, but I think it would have been more accurate to play bishop e6, queen d7, and then rook to g8, because I ended up getting that set up anyway. So anyway, after queen g5, queen f2, bishop e6, I bring my rook. I eventually kind of reach this position, and there's no clear way to break through. I want to take on h3 at the right moment. This is kind of my idea. I wasn't really scared of this h3 move because I knew at the right time I would be able to sacrifice my bishop and I'd be able to break through. Um, but I, there's just not really a good way to do it. If I take on h3 now, he just takes back and it's not really clear what I do. I can't sacrifice on h3. Um, it's too slow to bring my queen around here because he can just protect it with queen f1. It's just not really clear how I follow it up. So um, I try to bring my queen to d7 because from d7, I feel like it's kind of eyeing this h3 square, which again, that's where my breakthrough is going to come from. I, I knew that if I wanted to win, if I wanted to break through in the position, that's where it had to be. So after um, queen to d7, my opponent played knight to b2 here. And actually here, I made a mistake. Um, the computer says a rook takes g2 check was actually a stronger move. And I looked at this for a little bit, um, but I think I underestimated how strong it was. Because here, after a move like knight to e1, I think I, I calculated this, and I wasn't really sure how to continue. But apparently, if you just play rook to g3, um, now you're ready to take and then bring your queen to h3, take potentially on f3. And it feels like white's position starts to kind of fall apart. Once these pawns start rolling, it's very, very difficult to defend. Um, so this would have been a better sacrifice. It's kind of a, a risky sacrifice in general, but um, I, I was looking at it, so I probably could have seen it. I ended up playing bishop c7. I felt like all my pieces were optimized, except my bishop, so I wanted to get my bishop in the game. Um, knight d1 was played, bishop a5, rook c2. And now I bring the bishop to c3. Um, once the bishop's on c3, now I kind of reached this moment. I took a big think because, um, again, I felt like all my pieces were on great spots, but I wasn't sure how to break through. Um, so I spent a long time calculating, and eventually I saw this really cool idea that um, I, just, I just had a smile on my face when I saw it. Um, so I will, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let the, the game, um, let the chess speak for itself. But after rook to g6, computer's crazy. I don't know why it's an inaccuracy. Knight to a4, I play queen g7. Now I have this alakine's gun on the g file, three pieces all on one open file. And my opponent plays knight takes c5. Now, in this position, I was very excited to see knight take c5 because, um, like, way back here, I saw this combination and I was so happy to get to play it. Um, after knight takes c5, which he played really quickly, I was surprised how quickly um, he played this move because, like, if a master gives you a free pawn, it's probably not that free. Um, but anyway. He played knight takes c5, and here you can pause the video if you want to see the combination. Um, the first move was bishop takes h3. 
brilliant move. Um, and so I sacrifice the bishop. But if you know, if you get this in a tactic or something, you always look for the captures. Like it's not that hard to see. But to play in the game is a little bit different because you have to have confidence in your calculation and confidence that this actually works. So bishop takes h3. Um, and you know, you might be wondering, well, why can't he just take? Like that's kind of um, the critical question. Why why can't he just take that that bishop? It's a free bishop. Um, and you know, you're right. That is a free bishop. But black has to be very accurate from here to take advantage of that. Um, take advantage of this open G file. So first, rook to G1 is played, and this gets an exclam. So um, kind of have a streak of good moves here. Rook to G1, and now the queen is basically forced off of this F1 square, which is the key. This queen was doing a great job defending on this F1 square. And it was doing such a good job. I had so many pieces attacking, but I just couldn't break through until I kicked this queen off the f1 square. And now I'm ready to break through. So I play rook 6 to g3. Another uh, exclam. And now, after I bring my rook to g3, I knew the game was um, pretty much in the bag. The, the engine gives forced mate in 15. And here, um, I'm not sure, you know, again, if he saw my idea, but he played pretty quickly. He played uh, rook to c1, which is a mistake. And uh, now there is force main 3. So if you, again, want to try to figure it out for yourself, um, go ahead and pause the video. But here, I sacrificed the rook. I played rook takes h3, and after this move, black, or sorry, white is forced to take. Like, white literally has no other legal moves. White has to take. I play rook to h1 check. Another great move. My opponent has to play queen h2, and then queen to g3 is checkmate because the queen is pinned to the king and it's supported by pawns, and that king is checkmate. So just a really cool checkmate. Unfortunately, in the game, my opponent resigned here, so he didn't get to let me um, play it over the board. But I was really happy with co the, co this whole combination. It was really fun to play over the board. Um, and it's just a really cool combination in general. I was very happy that I was able to calculate it. Um, like all the way back here, I was able to see that like this whole combination worked. My opponent didn't have anything, any defensive resources. Um, so really just a cool game, um, a nice finish, um, and yeah, it was, a, it was a fun one. So thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next ones.